Hey, how are you doing? Welcome back to series four of the six part tutorial on illustration with me, Ed Reynolds. This week we will be looking at composition. Composition is the makeup of the visual elements that make up a picture, a painting, a drawing, a photograph, and the visual elements, so to speak, uh, be them people, be them plants, trees, buildings, um, streetscapes, townscapes, landscapes, all of that, they're the visual elements that make up the picture. And we'll be looking at the different ways in which composition can be laid out to make uh, the best of your artwork. Okay, here we go, thanks. According to impressionist painter Henry Matisse, composition is the art of arranging in a decorative manner the diverse elements at the painter's command to express his feelings. There are eight elements of composition in art that are used to arrange or organize the visual components in a way that is pleasing to the artist and one hopes the viewer. They help give structure to the layout of the painting and the way the subject is presented. Number one, unity. Do all the parts of the composition feel as if they belong together or does something feel like it's stuck on or awkwardly out of place? And then there's balance, it's the sense that the painting kind of feels right and not heavier on one side. Um, a painting that is not balanced creates a sense of unease. Movement, there are many ways to give a sense of movement in a painting such as the arrangement of objects, the position of figures, the flow of a river, etc. Then there's rhythm, which in much the same way does what music does, um, like a piece of art can have a rhythm or an underlying beat that leads your eye to view the artwork at a certain pace. Look for the large underlying shapes in artwork like squares, triangles, etc. and say the, the repeated colour. Focus or emphasis. The viewer's eye ultimately wants to rest on the most important thing or focal point in the painting. Otherwise the eye will feel lost just wandering around in space. Contrast. Paintings with high contrast, strong differences between light and dark, for example, have a different feel than paintings with minimal contrast in light and dark. In addition to light and dark, contrast can be differences in shape, colour, size, texture and type of line, etc. And we also have pattern, which is a, you would call, a regular repetition of lines, shapes, colours or values in any composition. And then last but not least, we have proportion which is how things fit together and relate to each other in terms of size and scale, whether big or small, nearby or distant. Guys, remember last week we were talking about one point, two point and three point perspective and how important it is in understanding it to construct um, good artworks. Well, here is a picture I found from many moons ago that I painted in Dublin, Donnybrook, uh, Brook, Brock Cottages in Donnybrook in Dublin. And I looked at it and I thought, yeah, classic example of one point perspective. Until I led my eye further and I started to draw the lines on this and I thought, no, this, this is actually a two point perspective painting. So you see just above the vanishing point on the horizon, there is the second vanishing point bringing down the guidelines which um, show up the bottom of the buildings on the right and left hand side where the buildings meet the pavement and where the pavement meets the road but they're a classic example of two point perspective and understanding it in making a very strong um, visual representation of a street we talk about uh, contrast in composition. We mentioned it there briefly at the introduction. Um, the contrast of, of colors, contrast of tones in shapes and in subject matter. This is a painting I did of a tiny, tiny, tiny little microbial soil mite. He's a tiny little mini beast that lives in our soils. And you can see obviously his surroundings are dark and muted and soily look soily looking in, in appearance while he as the centre of attention here is is has nice bright warm ochres, siennas, browns and uh, red tones. This is done with watercolour and 
um, inks, Indian inks, on a heavy heavy cartridge paper, and it's a picture I really really love. But it does it does show up um, very strong contrasts in tones here. Okay, we're going to do a very simple exercise. Um, we're going to make some marks on a page that will cause our eyes to do something. Okay, so we're just going to box this piece of paper up and do a very simple exercise in composition. Again, I said these are to do, make marks on a page that cause our eyes to do something, okay? So for example, here, if we do a series of arrows, okay? Just lines pointing to an area. Um, it's telling us, it's leading our eye in here. Um, not telling us what's there, but it's leading our eye in there nonetheless, okay? Um, I'm gonna start off with this. Um, I'm gonna start off with the just repeated patterns going down in a vertical direction. Going down and down and down. You're thinking, not much is really happening here other than it could be drops of rain it could be patterns on a wallpaper it could be anything but there's no there's no there's no drawing of the eye into this particular image but if we were to just maybe select one of these and go um, just do a horizontal line across here all of a sudden our line our eyes are drawn straight in to that where the vertical line meets the horizontal line um, which is often what we call what X marks the spot um, or like a target on a telescope or um, a gun gunfire it's it's where the aim is where the eye is drawn so that's a very helpful exercise um, another is the, the gradient exercise if you have a dark area here and you just fade it It draws from the dark, uh, congested block space to the lighter, um, yeah, just lighter, softer area. Your eye is led up along here, okay? And again, if we have just shapes, square, circle, nothing really happens here. But if we change the shape to rectangle, our eyes are drawn across the page. If we want to bring a vertical shape down, our eyes are brought down too. It leaves our eye around the picture, okay? So going back to this one with the arrows, and um, while you could say your eye is drawn in here, I mean, a picture with arrows doesn't particularly make a make up for a good picture. The composition isn't all that interesting, while our eyes are still, you know, directed to this center point. So we would like to, you know, if we try to do something here, if you had a foreground, this is rough, this you had a foreground of, you change the arrow shapes and block out the corners where the light comes in, okay? Rock these areas out here. This could be, say, you know, it could be trees, foreground of foliage, trees, plants, branches, whatever, leading us in, sweeps us up, down, and into this area. This could be a figure. But you would need to, you know, construct a composition based on these principles, leading the eye up around in and down to this point here that would be our you know the center point of this picture not central in in the page but it's the focal point in this picture so that's a kind of an exercise that's the thing you need to do you need to work out where the eye is being drawn into um on the, the subject matter of the picture that you do okay A, another very simple demonstration in composition is what's known as color and saturation. 
again like the vertical lines we drew earlier the little the little raindrops that were going down the page they were you know they weren't patterned they were random they were flat they were uninteresting but when we put that little line across you could see how the eye was directed in but here's a very just simple straightforward um, demonstration in color and saturation and drawing the eye in again look we've just got polka dots we get another color and saturation and we put it in there and our eye is drawn straight to the yellow dot okay very simple very effective try it And using shapes is another way for your focal point to stand out, okay? You've got just a series, series of flat cubes, one-dimensional shaped cubes. Well, cubes-ish, kind of like cubes. You're thinking, what's interesting about them? There's nothing drawing my eye to any of these shapes. But if you just change the shape, vary the shape, things look different. The eye is drawn straight to the triangle, okay? Very simple, very effective. Try this one at home, folks. Try it with anything. Vary your shapes, vary your color, and vary your contrast, okay? And when we talk of values and contrast, we talk, say, here, we can demonstrate just by using the same shape again. Come on in, slide diagonal angle. And same shapes, same color. But if we want to bring contrast in here, values, a way to draw the eye in. Again, we have a monotonous pattern with no direction for our eye to be led. And what do we do? By using the same shape, we use contrast. We're just using a different color. Okay, and our eye again is immediately drawn to the shape that has contrast. The rest of what's going on in the page. Try that also. Do. We mentioned movement earlier on and if you have, say, for instance, um, someone running or moving fast through a picture, this is just the dummy book kind of carry on movement, um, cartoonish. People are rushing on their way to get places, and you carry that through arm this way, arm that way. You want to draw the eye in somewhere. How do you do that? All these people are moving the one direction. What's the best thing to do to draw the eye into this picture? Can you tell me? Does anyone know? Hmm? Well, it's obvious. You just want to draw somebody that's standing still in the picture, okay? And that's where our eye is led. Well, it's your eye comes in, your eye stops here. Let's do a little horizon line here. So this was the subject of movement, activity or speed. Everyone's running along. This guy has stopped and I want to look at him. I'm wondering what he is doing, okay? So that's another useful lesson in drawing the eye in through movement, activity, or speed. Uh, most famous example here of movement 
is the dance class by Degas, where you see the teacher um, the sta standing, standing still in a room full of dancers, and the eye is drawn straight to the teacher. And there is a way to guide your eye in a picture by literally just focusing on the part that stands out through focus and blur, okay? Um, it's what sometimes photographers do uh, with use of their aperture. You know, you see pictures with a very focused figure or fo focused subject and a blurred surrounding or background. So again, a repeated pattern. The old polka dots are in this year. <laughs> polka dots are always in. But okay, so we have these blurred and you're going, where's my eye to focus here? There's nothing, nothing, nothing good or nothing strange or nothing leading about this. But if you just, if you just do one that hasn't been blurred and it's focused, it's a clean, clean circle, clean dot. It's the one that our eye tends to be drawn to through focus and blur in contrast. And finally, a, another way to draw or to bring our lines, bring our eye in is to draw a face in the middle of, it could be a maddening crowd, it could be anything. It could be the backs of people, they could be blurred out faces, but if you just draw the little face of somebody, it draws the eye in again. Simple, really simple, okay? Okay, you can see we've, we've used a series of very basic demonstrations to help us understand composition and how our eye is led um, into a picture using shapes and contrast and color, gradation, tone and perspective. Um, I hope this makes sense to you. I'd love to know that you're at home and you're trying this out. Uh, please do send us in any artworks that you've created along uh, throughout the series. We'd love to see them and we'd love to share them on the Wheelbox website. Okay, so that's it from me uh, until next week, folks. Thanks for being See you next week. Bye-bye.